welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to be upgrading the processor in a desktop PC. Specifically, we're going to be fitting this hexacore Intel i5 processor in a computer that currently has a dual-core Pentium. So let's go and get started. Right, here we have the PC we're going to upgrade, which is one of my test rigs which I worked on in several videos about a year ago. It's very important to understand that you can only upgrade a computer's CPU if you can get hold of a new processor that's compatible with its motherboard. And here, while the PC's case is pretty old, if we take a look inside like this, take off the side of the case, we find that the motherboard is pretty recent. And specifically, this is an ASRock 810M HVS motherboard, which means that it has an H410 chipset and supports Intel 10th generation core processors, which is what we're fitting here. In addition to taking a look inside, it's possible to find out what motherboard and hence what chipset are inside a PC from within Windows. So if we nip back in time to earlier today, here we are on the computer's desktop, and we go to search here in Windows 11, and we search for system information, or enough to bring it up like that, we can confirm we have indeed got an ASRock motherboard, and it is the H410M HVS Revision 2. And we can also see here that currently it's fitted with a Pentium Gold processor, the G6400, running at 4 GHz with two cores. And returning to the motherboard, something it's very sensible to do if you're going to be upgrading a motherboard's processor is to look up the motherboard on its manufacturer's website to check the specification. And I've done that here. Here is the web page for this particular motherboard on the ASRock site. And it says it supports 10th generation Intel Core CPUs. But if we scroll down, there is also a link here to a CPU support list. And it's very sensible to check this. And if we go down here, we're going to be fitting an i5 10400, which is sitting down there. And it's a slightly unusual chip, just to give you the information on it, because there were two different manufacturing versions, two different steppings, as they're known, of this chip. The G1, which is a native six-core chip, and the Q0, which was a 10-core CPU with four cores disabled. And that makes no difference at all to what's going on, and I don't even know right now which one of those is in the box we'll be opening in the next part of the video. But something that we must take note of is whether we need to do a BIOS upgrade to use our new CPU in the motherboard. And here it indicates we don't, it says all there, so all versions of the BIOS will support the chip we're going to be fitting. But if that weren't the case, you might have to do a BIOS update with your current CPU fitted before you change to the new CPU. Finally, the last thing I want to show you here in Windows before we update this PC is its current Passmark rating. I run Passmark 10 and we've got ratings like this, as you can see. And in particular, we're interested, of course, in the CPU mark because that's what we're about to change. So we've got these scores and we can refer back to them later in the video. So here we have our very exciting new i5-10400 processor all waiting to be fitted. And indeed, if we turn it that way up, we can see the processor looking out through the top of the box, except it's upside down. There we are, we can see the processor like that. And this has six cores clocked at a base frequency of 2.9 GHz, rising to a turbo boost of 4.3 GHz. And also included are Intel UHD 630 graphics, which we'll be using as our PC does not have a separate graphics card. In this context, it's important to note but if you're getting an Intel processor, the models ending in an F do not include onboard graphics. So if I'd bought an i5-10400F rather than this i5-10400, there would be no video output from the motherboard display connectors. And similarly, if you're purchasing a Ryzen processor, you must buy a chip with a G suffix if you require onboard graphics. Talking of purchasing, this 10th generation i5 cost me £146, or about $196, which is pretty reasonable for an i5 in the United Kingdom at the moment. 
and for comparison, the latest, slightly more powerful 12th generation i5-12400 sells for about £185, although of course it wouldn't be compatible with my motherboard. So let's bring in Stanley the knife and get inside this processor. I think we cut somewhere down here, I think. Can I manage another unboxing? We will see. There we are. Oh yes, we can get inside. Oh, there's a leaflet and a sticker and things. We'll look at that maybe later on. Probably won't. But if we slide things out, there we are. This is mainly the cooler. The processor, as we've seen, is on the top and just slides out like that. There is our processor. Amazing things, aren't they? All the little pads on the back, which will connect to the pins in the LGA socket on our motherboard. I do like a new processor, very exciting. And uh, other than that, we've got the cooler. We just open this up as well, take a look. There we are. Got to be careful with this because the thermal compound is pre-applied on the base, as we can see. But this is the cooler, ready to go in a stock Intel cooler. But I'll leave it in the box so we don't damage the thermal compound. So there we are. We've got our cooler, we've got our processor, all ready to be fitted in the computer. Now, having taken a great deal of care to ensure we've got a new CPU that's compatible with our motherboard, it's now time to fit it. And this is basically a four-stage process that involves us removing the cooler, taking out the old CPU, fitting the new CPU, and then putting back a cooler, which in this case will be the new cooler, although in fact it's identical to the old cooler. But before we do any of that, I'm also going to take out the RAM, which is not an essential thing to do when you're fitting a new CPU in the motherboard, but because the RAM is very, very close to the cooler, very close indeed here, it'll just give us a bit more space to work with. So let's just release the uh, clips on the uh, DIMM modules like this. That'll just allow them to come out and then we can lift them out of the computer like that. Just put them down over here nice and carefully. And we can now move on to remove the cooler where the first thing to do is to unplug its fan connector, which is down here. Excuse my fingers, I just obscure the shot, but there we are. That's been taken out from the socket. And we can now move on to release the push pins at the four corners of the cooler. And to do this, we need to take a flat ended screwdriver like that. And if we go down to one of the corners, as you can hopefully see, there's a very faint arrow on the top of the push pins. And all we have to do is to take our screwdriver and put it in here and rotate it 90 degrees in direction of the arrow, and the push pin is now uh, loose. I'm trying to show you this without getting my fingers in the shot, but hopefully you can see this has now been released from the corner of the cooler. So if we now just do the other three, just going in like this, like that, this one here, and this one here. It's a good mounting system, this. And now the cooler is no longer connected to the motherboard, but there is some thermal compound on the base of the cooler attaching it to the, the top of the CPU. And sometimes that can get a bit old and actually start to uh, set and cause some problems getting things off. So always be very careful with this. Give a little bit of movement just to check. This one I think is okay. And yes, this is coming out. Yes, we've removed the cooler from the CPU. As we can see, there is thermal compound left on top of the old processor. And I love the way it looks a little bit like a brain. But all we now need to do to remove the old processor is to gently just take that lever out like that and take the lever back like this out of the way. There we are. This thermal compound will need to be cleaned off the top of this processor, but I'll do that when I've got it out of the computer. So I'll just reach in here and gently take out the old CPU like that. And we can now reverse the process by taking the new CPU from its plastic packet and drop it into the socket very carefully like this, has to go in the right way around. There are two little notches at the side to make sure it does. That's gone in absolutely fine. And then we now have to put down the retaining mechanism, which goes all the way across, and then we'll come back like that, slide into place to hold the CPU, and my lever will lock under there if I can keep my fingers out the way. And there we are, we have fitted the new i5 processor. And it's worth pointing out that whilst here we fitted an Intel chip into an LGA 1200 socket, the process is very similar when you're fitting an Intel chip into a different socket or when you're fitting an AMD CPU. So let's return to the cooler, which is waiting patiently in its box with its thermal compound still undisturbed. So let's take this out to fit it in the computer. And if we just move the cooler 
roughly into position. You'll see I've detached the fan cable so we can make sure the cooler is correctly positioned if this will fit into the right place on the motherboard. Trust me on that one right now, as I just get this nicely in line, like that, going gently down on top of the CPU, like that. And then holding things carefully, we'll just push on the push pins. That's one, holding that in place, opposite corner over here. Second one, that's now nice and secure. That one down in there, and this one down in there. The cooler is now secured to the motherboard. So, all that remains is to put in the fan connector, which goes in down here. And again, excuse my fingers as I push that in, but at least you can see now it's properly in place. And I also think it would be well advised to put back in the RAM, so we'll do that. I want to make sure the computer can remember things like exciting programs and data and that kind of stuff. There's one. Over here we've got the other one. Put that in as well. Oh, it is great putting things into computers. There we are, the RAM is back in place. And with the fan lead carefully secured out of the way so it can't possibly interfere with the fan, and having done a proper inspection, you always want to have a good once over of a computer after you've been doing some work on it, make sure everything is in place, have you disturbed any wires, things like that. You don't want to be like one of those Android doctors who leaves a screwdriver inside the patient. But uh, everything here seems okay, so we'll take the side of the case and drop it back into place like that, and uh, drop in some screws and cross our fingers that our CPU upgrade is a success. Greetings! Here I am back again, and as you can see I've now got the computer all uh, connected up to a monitor and a keyboard and even one of my lovely 3M ergonomic mice. And this is of course now time to press the button and see if it works. I'm going to cross my fingers. Has the computer survived its processor upgrade? So let's uh, see. Can it boot into Windows? I can hear some noises, I don't know if you can, but there's sounds of things going on. Oh, we've got stuff on the screen, that's a good thing. Oh, it looks like it's going into Windows. It's set to go straight into a local account. It's done it! Wow! Oh, the relief! It's worked! Good little computer, you worked very nicely. There we are, we booted into Windows with the new i5 CPU. So uh, for now, I'm just going to say thank you very much, computer. Thank you, world. Everything has worked. And I'll come back to you tomorrow when we'll see if Windows is still activated, if there are things we need to do there. And of course, we'll run some performance tests. Right, here we are back on the Windows desktop. And if we bring up system information, we can see we do indeed now have an i5 processor. Be a bit surprising if that wasn't shown there right now, but it's good to see that it is. And if we close this down, I want to go into settings and check on Windows activation status. So we'll just do that, see if Windows is activated. And yes, Windows is still activated. We can click down there. Windows is activated with a digital license. And this means that Windows has not taken the CPU upgrade to be a big enough hardware change to deactivate it, which is what I thought would probably happen. I thought we'd be okay. Certainly, if we changed the motherboard, we would have needed to reactivate Windows. And it's not impossible for deactivation to occur when changing other components. For this reason, before changing a CPU, I would recommend making sure that any activated Windows license is linked to a Microsoft account as this means you should be able to reactivate Windows using the activation troubleshooter if necessary. Right now, here on this machine, we're running Windows on a local account, which is always my preference. But before this upgrade, I did add a Microsoft account to this PC where it displayed Windows is activated with a digital license linked to your Microsoft account. So I could have used that account to reactivate Windows if there'd been a problem. Anyway, let's move on from activation, which isn't an issue for us here, and run the Passmark performance tests. Yes, Windows, we want to do it. There we are, that Passmark will now hopefully come up. There it is, and it'll populate, find out all the hardware on the machine. It's done that. And uh, we now run all the tests down there. Uh, do we want to run a test? Yes, we do. 
And here we are in the first of the 3D graphics tests. I just thought we'd pause here to take a look so we can see how the UHD 630 graphics on this CPU is performing. And uh, this isn't too bad. It's obviously not comparable to having an external graphics card, but we're getting about uh, almost 25 frames a second with these uh, jets flying around on the screen. But once we hit this test, we are clearly struggling a bit, about five or six frames a second here. Oh, and look, we've arrived in my favorite, the floating jellyfish in space test. Oh, the floating jellyfish. They must be somewhere. There they are, look. Floating jellyfish test is giving us, again, around 25-ish frames a second. Oh, I do like this particular pass mark test. I don't know why. I just think it's very exciting indeed. And here we are flying around in outer space at about 12 or 13 frames a second. Not spectacular. Still not terrible. You could do a little bit of gaming on this i5 with its internal graphics. And the tests are now complete. So let's bring up for comparison the results we got with the Pentium Gold processor, where we can see quite clearly we've got a much improved pass mark score. We've gone from 1762 to 2847. And of course, the big change here is the CPU mark. Let's bring up all the individual CPU scores, where we can see our CPU mark is now 13072 compared to 4243. And I do look forward to using this new upgraded test rig in many of my forthcoming videos, which will include testing out Ubuntu 2204 in April 2022. So there we have it. My Intel test rig now has a lovely new Hexacore i5 CPU. But I've not finished with its hardware just yet, as I'm going to be making further changes to the computer in a series which will be starting here on the channel in a few weeks' time. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.